بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على سيد المرسلين محمد الأمين أما بعد I begin to see more and more that people are thinking upside down. You see, when it comes to your own life, like Musa and Khidr, and things happen in people's lives, I lost my job, my marriage didn't work out, my child didn't turn out the way I thought he or she would turn out. When things happen in your personal life, you don't look at the apparent, you don't look at the obvious, like we see in the story of Musa and Khidr. You don't look at the obvious. You look for the hidden wisdom. You look beyond the apparent into the hidden meaning of things, because that is your experience. But when you look at the world outside yourself, why did these happen? Why did this happen? How many people were there? When you look at the external world, you don't look for the internal hidden meanings. You look for the apparent. What the world, the modern world has done is it switched it. It wants you to question Allah by looking at the apparent of your world. Oh, why did God do this? Why did I lose my job? Why did they die this way? Or why did they die that way? Look at the apparent when it comes to personal life. Look at the apparent when it comes to personal life is what the modernity, modern thought leads you to that direction. And when it comes to looking at events, you want to decodify it and get to the bottom of it and to guess to the reality of it and try to see beyond the apparent into the hidden uh, reality of something. Now, I'm not saying that that can't have time happen from time to time, or there are not shades of events that give you a glimpse into the reality of things beyond the apparent. I'm not saying that. But I'm saying where your focus should be according to the Quran. We're going to go over the verses of Sulkaf where we will discuss this ayah by ayah, okay? Verse by verse, <clears throat> so that we understand what I'm trying to say in a little bit more detail. There are times where you need to say, Insha'Allah, Masha'Allah, La hawla wa la quwata illa billah. There are times where you look at the apparent, and there are times where you look for the hidden meaning. When to do that? When should you analyze things according to the apparent? When should you analyze things according to their hidden uh, realities? And when should you question things uh, in either or situation? So let me start, for example, <coughs> Russia may be part of some bigger agenda. Russia may be part of some bigger agenda. And Imran Khan and Erdogan may be part of some bigger agenda. We, but ultimately, it's a guess. We don't know for sure. It is a guess that, yes, that may be the case, that Russia may be part of a controlled agenda and Imran Khan's part of a controlled agenda and Erdogan is part of a controlled agenda. It, it may be true, but this is not the prophetic way of looking at things. Look, the Prophet وسلم, he knew he had munafiqeen amongst his jama'ah. He knew Abdullah bin Ubay accepted Islam only to what? To look good in front of the people. He was about to be the king and he couldn't become the king because the people accepted the Prophet. And now he had no choice but to accept Islam. And he was sabotaging Islam from the inside. To the point, and he did this his entire life, to the point that in the Battle of Badr, there were 1,100 people going. Abdullah bin Ubay, Ra'isul Munafiqeen, the most munafiq person known in the seerah of the Prophet, he convinces 300 of the Sahaba to go back, that it wasn't a good idea to go to Uhud. We should have stayed in Medina and fought there. This man should have been caught and put to the put to the gallows. But the Prophet didn't do that, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He looked at things from their apparent. He looked at other people and other event, events from their apparent. The Prophet knew, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and was being told that the Jewish community in Medina 
Okay, the people of the book in Medina, they're going to backstab you, that they're working against you. But the Prophet kept his contract, his mithaq, his covenant he made with them. Only when they broke the contract did he rise up against them and ask them to leave Medina. You see, there's a prophetic way of looking at things and a prophetic way of doing things. There is a time where you have to think about the hidden meaning of things, and there's a time where you look at the apparent of things, when you look at the apparent meanings of things. And so this is why I wanted to now go over the verses of Quran that deal with different aspects of this. Look, absolute knowledge, absolute knowledge, absolute knowledge, absolute knowledge is only Quran. Only Quran. Absolutely absolute knowledge, for sure knowledge is Quran. The only question after that is, is our interpretation of the words of Allah correct? from a human at the human capacity as much as correct as they can be. So, <clears throat> with this introduction in mind, okay, I want every student of mine to watch this video because sometimes we get, get so caught up in the hidden meaning of the external things when we should be only looking at the apparent. We should be aware that yes, there may be another agenda, there might be another agenda behind Imran Khan. There might be another agenda behind Erdogan. There might be another. But we look and we judge in Sharia based upon the Zahir. Based upon what is apparent. This is the very definition of Islam. Islam judges people not based upon their Iman. Islam judges people based upon their Zahir. Once somebody says, La ilaha illallah, Muhammad Rasulullah. He can be Fir'aun. He could be Imran Khan. He could be anybody. He's Muslim from the apparent. Okay, you're Muslim, but you're not a practicing Muslim. You're a disobedient Muslim. You drink alcohol. Okay, all of that. But somebody who says, La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah, we don't go into his heart and see if he's not Muslim. We are not allowed to do that. Ali radiallahu an, according to another riwayah, another sahabi, uh, Zayd ibn uh, Thabit radiallahu an, he killed a man. And when he was killing him, he was saying, La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah. And the Prophet asked him over and over again, Did you open his heart? Did you open his heart? Did you open his heart to see if he really meant it or he just did that to protect himself? Did you, what will you do with this, O Zayd, on the Day of Judgment? We look on the Zahir of things. And when it comes to our life or when it comes to tragedy, when it comes to why did this happen? Then we look, we look beyond the apparent to the, uh, to the hidden, when it's personal. When it's personal. Okay? And we look beyond the sharia. So, Khidr kills a person and Musa is looking at the sharia. That is the way to look. Musa has a higher rank than Khidr in terms of rank. He is the Rasul of the time. Okay, and every Rasul has a higher rank than all the human beings. He's the representative of Allah. So Musa wasn't wrong when he said, why did you do this? This is wrong. He was right. But when it comes to your personal life and tragedies happen or things don't go in life as you thought, then you say, mashallah, whatever Allah wills. Then you leave it in the hands of Allah. You look for knowing there's a hidden wisdom behind it. And they say, those who have experienced surrendering to Allah, those who have experienced surrendering to Allah, they say, like Musa when he surrendered himself to Khidr. When you surrender yourself to your fate, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give you the ta'wil, give you the reason of why it happened in your life. But if you don't surrender, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala may keep you in that confusion of why did that happen in my life but to, to attain that you must have a lot of sabr but when it came to the externalities as Sut al-Kahf will explain and when it comes to the externalities don't try to think about the unseen reality look at the apparent first and foremost that is the priority 
Then you may go, but you will make your primary judgment based upon the apparent. And there's a lot of wisdom in this, which I don't have time to go into all of it. But let me give you a scenario. Let's say we take Imran Khan and he's part of the Satanist and he's part of that. Okay, khalas, he's part of that. But on the apparent, he keeps saying, Riyasatul Medina, the Medina state, the prophetic model, the prophetic model, the prophetic model. And he has gathered these the, the simpleton people, the people who don't think deeply. He's gathered them around him using this phrase and using religion against the people to fool the people, let's suppose. But what has happened in the process? <coughs> Our stance, as the prophetic stance should be, yes, if you are, not that he is, but if you are for the Medina model, if you are for standing up for Islam, if you are for true freedom, then that is good. And we get everyone to say that is good because that is really good. And now, even if he's fooling people, the people are being taught of what is being good for them. And when Allah exposes him, then the people will leave him and stay with the idea. Or, when the people say, yes, this is why we're with you, we're with you because you're going to give us our freedom. And even if he is not really about that, but he'll be forced to do that because he knows he'll lose his popularity if he doesn't do what the people want. And the Prophet used this method many times, sallallahu alayhi wasallam. Many times he used the power of influence when people were coming into Islam. Okay, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Surah Al Hujrat, Allah says, amanna. The desert Bedouins were now coming in troves. Islam is victorious, and people are coming left, right, and center accepting Islam. And about them, Allah says, amanna. The desert Bedouins say, We believe. Qul la tu'minu. Allah says, No. You don't have true Iman yet. You never went through the battles of Badr and Uhud. You're accepting Islam because that's what everyone's doing. It's a convenient thing to do. But say we've surrendered. We've surrendered. And Islam didn't take away their shahada. Didn't take their away their entering Islam. No. Nope. We go on the dhahir, we go on the apparent of things. Now, this will be better understood when I go over the verses of the Qur'an in Surah Al-Kahf that discuss uh, this issue from this perspective. Not everything is of one degree. And, not, and everyone has evidences for different things. But number one, we start with Qur'an. And number two, we make a distinction between the apparent and what is not apparent. And when it comes to our life, we surrender to Allah and we know there's wisdom behind whatever is happening. And when it comes to the world events, when it comes to people around us, okay, we look at the zahir, we look at the apparent. So now with this in mind, let's look at some of the verses of Stul Kahf. Number one, Stul Kahf question answers Quran is a source of knowledge. Now when the Quran tells you something and your knowledge tells you something different, let me, I will give you an example at the end of this. <clears throat> but let's now continue, inshallah. Number one verse. Number one, Quran, Quran, Quran is the source of ultimate knowledge. نَحْنُ نَقُصُّ عَلَيْكَ نَبَأَهُمْ بِالْحَقِّ O Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa we are going to tell you their naba'a, their information in truth. Okay? We're going to tell you the truth about them. Who's going to tell you the truth about them? Allah. It comes from Qur'an. And once Allah has said it, you only have to make sure that your interpretation is correct. Allah then says in another part of Surah Al-Kahf, لَوْ لَا يَأْتُونَ عَلَيْهِمْ بِسُلْطَانٍ بَيِّنٍ Even though there has not come upon them a sultan, a proof that is clear, that they worship idols, it's their thought. It's their hawa. It's their, it's their own imagination that has led them to this way. Even though clear proof has not come. Okay? Clear proof means that it's not guesswork. It's clear. It means clear. Allah says, 
you found you thought that they were awake meaning the ashabul kahf you thought that they were awake but they were in fact sleeping the apparent looks like something but the reality is something else and then allah describes why they looked apparent and what allah was doing for them but even though this was the case, what do you do between the apparent and the reality? Who is going to tell you the reality of things? Allah. And who is going to look at the apparent of things? You. You have to look at the apparent of things. Allah is going to tell you the reality of things. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then continues and says, كَذَلِكَ بَعَثْنَاهُمْ This is why we raised them back up. لِيَتَسَاءَلُوا So they question بَيْنَهُمْ between themselves. And then about arguing and questioning, which is disliked in Islam. Allah says, amrahum." When they were arguing with one another about their affair. Why were they arguing? Because they don't have the right priorities on how to understand, how to question, what to question, when to look at the apparent meaning, when to look at the hidden meaning. Okay, so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala continues to say about their attitude of knowledge. سَيَقُولُونَ ثَلَاثَةٌ رَابِهُمْ قَلْبُهُمْ They say there were three and the fourth was the dog. وَيَقُولُونَ خَمْسَةٌ وَسَادِسٌ Now these people that said that three and three and the fourth one is a dog, was this their imagination? They had no basis, they had no feeling, they had no number, they had no idea, they didn't have no narration. They had some basis, but it was still the knee. It was not uh, absolutely obvious. It wasn't obvious. وَيَقُولُونَ خَمْسَةٌ سَادِسُمْ كَلْبُهُمْ And there were five and the six was the dog. رَجْمًا بِالْغَيْبِ Throwing darts in the unseen. Was it this? Was it this? Is this? Is, it, is Imran Khan this? Is Ardugan this? We go on the apparent. If Ardugan takes the right steps according to the Sharia of Islam, we say good. Even if he's working with the Satan. If a non-Muslim does something in the right step, we say yes, good, even if he's working for the Satan. If a good Muslim who is a ruler and he does something wrong, we don't say good because we go on the apparent meaning of things. So if the next Khalifa does something wrong or if any Khalifa does something wrong, we say it's wrong. We go on the apparent. He can't say, oh no, I had this feeling because of this hidden information that I got. No, we don't go there. يَقُولُونَ سَبْعَةٌ وَثَامِنُهُمْ كَلْبُهُمْ They say there were seven and the eighth was the dog. قُلْ رَبِّي أَعْلَمُ بِعِذَّتِهِمْ Say Allah knows best their numbers. One of the big problems for us in the modern age is to say Allah knows. No, we have to know. Even if it's not 100% sure, what is doubtful will say we know. Instead of saying Allah knows best. Allah knows best. Allah knows best. Allah knows best. Insha'Allah. Allah knows best. رَبِّ أَعْلَمُ بِعِدَّتِهِمْ وَمَا يَعْلَمُهُمْ إِلَّا قَلِيلٌ فَلَا تُمَارِهِمْ Don't argue with them. إِلَّا مِرَاءً ظَاهِرًا Accept the apparent of things that are in the argument. Argue about things that you know, that you see, that you can observe, that the whole world sees. Yes. But you have then a question. What about COVID-19? What about 9-11? Where do we put that in all of this? Do we go based upon the zahir? Or do we go? are we going based upon the hidden meaning? No. You see, this is a very important point here. There is a difference between being blind and just following whatever the media is saying and knowing the zahir. The apparent of, of, of Circus 19 is that it was a hoax. And the apparent of 9-11 was that it was a hoax. And the ultimate knowledge comes from Qur'an. And Qur'an tells us, beware of number 19. فَلَا تُمَارِيهِمْ إِلَّا مِرَاءً ظَاهِرًا وَلَا تَسْتَفْتِي فِيهِمْ مِنْهُمْ أَحَدًا And don't ask about them from anyone. They don't know. Why do you need to know? There's a lot of other lessons in this ayah that have to do with knowledge, but I'm going to skip. Then in another place, Allah says, 
وقل عسى أن يهديني ربي لأقرب من هذا الرشادة Guidance and knowing has degrees. Somebody knows 10%, somebody knows 20%, somebody knows 30%, somebody knows 40%. The people that said there were three and the fourth was the dog, they were less close. The people that said there were five and the sixth was the dog were more close. Allahu alam. But there's degrees of knowing. Things are not black and white. There's degrees of how much you know and how close you are to the truth. قُلْ اللَّهُ أَعْلَمُ بِمَا لَبِثُوا Allah knows best how long they were and then how long they stayed sleeping. Allah knows. I don't know. I wasn't there. If I read something in some book, if I read some narrations, maybe. But it's not 100% idhani. Then Allah says again, Look, the ultimate source of knowledge is the book of Allah. So Allah says, وَاتْلُوا مَا أُوْهِيَ إِلَيْكَ مِنْ كِتَابِ رَبِّكَ You should recite to them, O Nabi Muhammad وسلم, whatever has been revealed from your Lord's book. لا مُبَدِّلَ لِكَلِمَاتِ There's no changing the words of Allah. وَلَنْ تَجِدَ مِنْ دُونِهِ مُلْتَحَدَ okay. There's no changing the words of Allah and there's no refuge other than Allah. وَقُلِ الْحَقُّ مِنْ رَبِّكُمْ The haqq is from Allah. So if you want to understand the hidden meaning of things, either you look in Qur'an to tell you the reality of things. If you can't see in the Qur'an the hidden meaning of things or the hidden reality of things, then you must stick to the lahir, the obvious. Over here I want to mention that please do subscribe to the channel. And also I have a uh, comment in the comment section that I've pinned. Please read that. Please uh, consider donating. And also uh, consider joining my Telegram um, channel. And, uh, and so that will, inshallah, be a further connection of learning and growing together, inshallah. Okay, so now I'm on. Let's continue. And so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us, look, I'm going to share something with you. <clears throat> Before we continue here, something very important. Look. The basis of thinking wrong, one of the basis of thinking wrong is arrogance. Iblis was arrogant. And when you are arrogant, full of yourself, you can't think. Because you're so emotionally caught up in your arrogance, I am better than he is. Who said he's better than he is? Why didn't he think that the angels are also better than God? But I am better than he is. When you become arrogant, you lose your capacity to think. And when you become arrogant, you lose your capacity to see the obvious. And in your arrogance and in your emotional swelling, you start to give more credibility to what you are thinking over what is apparent. Anyway, with this said, okay, Qala, the man in the garden, he said, Ma adhunnu anta bida hadhi abada. I don't think this garden is going to ever go anywhere. It's too perfect. It has water, has the trees to protect it. It's perfect garden. It's going to always be there. My factory will always be there. Wa ma adhunnu sa'ata qa'ima. And he also thought in his thinking of what? That the hour, the day of judgment will never come. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala continues to, you can say, criticize the people who talk as if they know what has always happened in the universe. The automatic process of evolution and creation, as they call it, the automatic process. Um, I mean, they don't call it, but I'm, I'm labeling it that for them. مَا أَشَّدْتُهُمْ We didn't make them witness. خَلْقُ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ The creation of the heavens and the earth. What do you know? how these opposing forces came together, how the negative and positive forces came together. Nor did we make you witness the creation of yourself. Why are you placing so much emphasis on speculating knowledge of this theory and that theory? Meaning, it may be true, but it also may not be true. It's not sure knowledge. Sure knowledge is what comes in Qur'an. And then Allah says, يُجَادُلُ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا بِالْبَاطِلِ لِيُضْهِذُوا بِهِ الْحَقِّ 
And the people of Kufr, they argue with batil. They give you a batil argument to dislodge the truth. To dislodge the truth. But if you're not thinking Islamically, and you're thinking in the same way that they're thinking that you're coming up with a lot of theories in your mind about hidden things that is beyond the obvious, then you're not thinking Islamically. You are to look at the apparent of things until there is a reason in the Qur'an or the Sunnah of the Prophet to understand the hidden meaning of things. So now we go to Musa and Khidr. وَعَلَّمْنَاهُ مِنْ لَدُنَّ عِلْمًا And he was a man who had true knowledge, Khidr. Okay? He had the knowledge of seeing beyond the reality into the hidden meaning and the reality beyond the apparent to the hidden meaning of things. أَن تُعَلِّمَنِي مَا مِمَّا عُلِّمْتَ رُشْتَ So Musa والسلام, said to him, Can you please teach me of the good, the, the guidance, the rush, the mature guidance Allah has given you? So what does Khidr say? فَكَيْفَ تَصْبِرُ عَلَى مَا لَمْ تُحِدْ بِهِ خُبُرًا how can you be patient over the thing that you don't have knowledge of? You don't know the apparent, you don't, it's not apparent to you what's really happening. And Musa alayhi being the Rasul of Allah wasn't trained in that. He was thinking Islamically, which is to look at the apparent things. To look at things from the perspective of the Sharia. But what is being given here is that behind the apparent there are things happening. And when things happen in your personal life or the people close to you, or the people you care about, you have to know that there is a greater wisdom working behind this. So when it comes to are there three, are there five, are there seven, was it 300 years, was it 200 years, you look at the apparent. We don't know. We're not going to guess. Stay away from guessing. Stay away from theorizing. If you connect dots between something, try to connect it back to the Qur'an. Otherwise, say Allah knows best. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, فَلَا تَسْأَلْنِي عَنْ شَيْءٍ حَتَّى أُحْدِثُ لَكَ مِنْهُ ذِكْرَ Don't ask me about anything until I mention it to you myself. Sometimes if you surrender to Allah and let life play out as it's supposed to be, the wisdom becomes clear why Allah allowed that to happen. And then Khidr says later on, سَأُنَبِّئُكَ بِتَعْوِيلِ مَا لَمْ تَسْتَثِعَ عَلَيْهِ صَبْرَ I will give you the ta'wil of things that is beyond the apparent for which you did not have sabr. You couldn't understand why this was happening. So then he says, he tells him the whole why things happen the way that they happen? What was the real reasoning behind it? This is what I and you have to accept in our life to look beyond the apparent when it comes to our personal life. And when it comes to the world around us, we judge it based upon sharia, based upon the dhahir, based upon the obvious. And the only reason we go beyond the obvious is that there is some thing Allah told us in Quran that gives us the penetration to see beyond the obvious. So then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala continues, يَسْأَلُونَكَ عَنْ ذِي الْقَرْنَيْنِ And they ask you, O Prophet, they ask who they ask the Prophet, and the Prophet answers for them about the hidden. Because why did they, what is one of the messages in Sutil Kaf? They ask the Prophet, he'll tell you. Ask Allah, he will tell you. And they asked the Prophet about Zulqarnayn, and he told them, penetrate into the Qur'an to see the reality of things. If you don't, the result will be If you're serious about Qur'an If you're serious Then you will use Qur'an as your yardstick to judge things Not your theories, not your speculation Not rajman bil ghaib Otherwise, the result will be You took Allah and His Messenger as a joke You made your own uh, ideas of what happened in the universe And evolution and you know, all these things happen to some degree, but not the way that they want you to think. That's a different topic, <clears throat> but what the khadu ayati wa rusuli huzuwa. So, innama ana basharum mithlukum yuha ilay. O Prophet, tell them, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, I'm a man like you, but what? I have knowledge. 
قَدْ جَاءَنِي عِلْمٌ مَا لَمْ يَعْتِكْ Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam said this to his dad. Knowledge has come to me that didn't come to you. Muhammad has knowledge that has not come to any man. He has seen the heavens and the hells and he's seen space. He's seen the future. He's been told the future of every event. But I'm a messenger. I'm a man. But I have knowledge that you don't have. I am the source of knowledge and my Quran is the source of knowledge. So if you want to go beyond the apparent, then come to the Quran, come to the sayings of the Prophet ﷺ. From there, once you are analyzing the Quran, the only question is, did you analyze correctly? Was your ta'wil correct? Was your methodology correct? And I'll give you one example of that shortly. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, right? Don't say I'm going to do something tomorrow Except when you plan to do something tomorrow You don't know what wisdom Allah has for you for tomorrow What hidden uh, wisdom Allah has for you tomorrow You say inshallah And Allah knows what will actually happen in his wisdom And maybe he, he will allow it to happen What I want and what I plan And maybe Allah will allow something else to happen That is even better for me That I didn't plan And then the same uh, insha'Allah and the dhikr of Allah and the remembering of Allah and saying Allah knows best why is it not that when you entered your garden kulta masha'Allah whatever Allah wills if Allah has willed this then it's that's the will of Allah la quwwata illa billah there's no power other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so dear brothers and sisters the problem is and I'm going to and on this note, the problem is we're thinking upside down. When we look at the world, we want to guess and theorize and speculate. Rajman bin Ghaib. And when we think about ourselves, we say, why did Allah do this? I wish Allah does this. I wish Allah gives me this. I wish Allah lets me marry this person. I wish this and I wish that instead of leaving it into Allah. If it's good for me, let it happen. Allah, you know best. Allah knows best. I don't know. Have I don't have and I don't. I cannot know the answer to everything. I will and the I will judge peace people based upon their zahir until they make their kufr zahir. For example, I will judge people that they are Muslims until they make their kufr being kufr. They don't agree with La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah. As an example, I'm giving that they make it obvious. I'll judge based upon the apparent. I only can see and know the apparent. In the sama wal basara wal fuad. My sama, what I hear and what I see, I'm responsible for that, not for finding hidden meanings. The only time I penetrate from the apparent into the realities is that if the Quran tells me something about it that helps me penetrate beyond the apparent. So, for example, the Quran says, Those who say, Inna Nasara, we're Christians, and they have monks and they have priests. At a time where the pagans and the uh, Bani Israel, Yehud, they are working against you. At that time when you see somebody saying, our identity is inna nasara, we are Christians. At that time, you will see that those who say we are Christians and they have, they have a whole foundation of priests and monks, you will find them closest to you. Now, does that translate into Russia? Or it doesn't translate into Russia. This is something we can discuss. But if it translates into Russia for you, then you'll say this ayah is, I, now I can see beyond apparent into the hidden reality of things. Yes, Putin may be with the reset, even though he's been kicked out of it. But let's suppose he's with the reset. And let's say he's playing a charade. He's playing a charade. Let's say he's playing a charade. You play a charade. Let him play his charade. We will stick with what the Quran says. We will stick with the timeless truth of Quran. That at no time does the Quran give you guidance and it is not true. It doesn't happen. You know, so <clears throat> if somebody is part of a controlled, uh, I'll give you an example. <clears throat> the Dajjal will not come till the Mahdi comes. So should we not paved the way for the Mahdi to come. This type of theorizing is not allowed. This type of theorizing is not allowed.
Should we not build a khilafa? Because after the uh, khilafa, the Dijal will come? No, it's an obligation to build the khilafa. It's an obligation to establish Islamic communities. So the point is, we look at the apparent, we look at the sharia, we look at the zahir, until the Qur'an gives us hidden meanings of something. Number one. Number two, when it comes to our personal life, we submit to Allah, and we say Allah knows best, and we submit to the greater wisdom of Allah. When it comes to the outside world, were there three, or was it 300 years, or such and such, we look at the apparent of things. This is how to think Islamically. So now we have to sit down and ask ourselves that all the news that I read, and all the things that I read, do I theorize in my mind without attaching myself to Qur'an? Did I get my ideas connecting the dots to the Qur'an? Or did I get my dots, my ideas outside without even connecting to the Qur'an? Did I connect the dots to the life of the Prophet? Or did I connect, not connect the dots? Or just my own, yani, my own theories, my own speculation? If it's not connecting to the Qur'an, then you are in danger of being like those people that said, no, there were three, but the fourth one was this, and there were five, and the sixth one was this. You're in danger of being in that space. And so we are, our thinking has become upside down. Our questioning has become upside down. Our understanding of our life and surrendering to Allah and saying, Allah knows best has gone all upside down. We want to control the things that we don't have control of. And we want to speculate on the things beyond their zahir. And we don't want to surrender to Allah. And we want to judge Allah based upon our zahir. We want to judge Allah based upon what we see apparently. And this is not wisdom. And this is not Islamic way of thinking. So I hope that all of you will pick up Sutul Kahf this Friday or before Friday and read Sutul Kahf from the perspective of asking, how should I question things? How should I look at things? How should I understand things? When should I say Allah knows best? When should I say, no, I'm going to stick to the Zahir? And when should I say that this is connecting to the Quran and giving me the penetrating into the hidden meaning of something? Or when should I say that my personal life, the difficulties and the crises and the situation I'm in, Allah has some wisdom in it for me. So, then, the last thing I'll end with, that yes, sometimes there can be indications of things through things like true dreams or kashf and so on and so forth. But, we will, but that's the exception. We first need to get this part right. What is apparent? Is, is more important than what is hidden until or what is based upon the Sharia is more important until the Quran directs you to some hidden understanding so you have some hidden treasure if the Quran doesn't direct you then you can speculate all you want you may be right you may be wrong we don't know the heart of any human being or the hidden realities of things so I end here أقول قولي هذا أستغفر الله لي ولكم وليساء المسلمين والمسلمات السلام عليكم ورحمة